走れソリよ風のように月見原をパトルパトルはあ、い、ハロー、ハロー、ワン。ああ、エクスキューズ、マイ、クリンジ。ああ、anyway, I hope everyone's doing all right this evening. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be doing with、uh, Rashi Watanagashi. And, uh, My mug go. How am I gonna eat that? Um, in case you're wondering what type of mug I have, um, I have a mug of there's, there's a little cat like character called T. Ever, it's kind of like a famous, just sort of like family type. Japanese animated thing, like shorts or whatever. I don't really watch the thing, but I really like the, the style of the, the cat. It's very cute. Which is why I wanted the mug. Very cute. Eat with the. Anyway. If anyone was wondering about that, <laughs> off chance. Anywho. Uh, go ahead. Let me. Oh, actually, on. There we go. Has sound now. Good thing I remembered that. Okay, that should be good now. Sorry, I just wanted to make sure my tablet was just there. Um, quick of water. I had a diet soda earlier, and I had that, um, that, uh, artificial sweet paper out of my, off my tongue. About to have some, some oolong. Okay. Yeah, no, she's itchy. All right, continuing on. Just in it, chapter five. Shocking revelation. As indicated by the cookie music. Cookie music. But we do have a new. I have a tip that I saved for. Ah! Hot water. That I saved. Hasn't been a while, what you say? Stop saying it's been a while. We've seen each other every day up until yesterday, haven't we? Whatever. If say so, we'll go with that. Someone from Xion's house came to get me in a station wagon. Initially refused, but Xion insisted. But both my bicycle and I ended up stuffed in the car. That car was currently driving across the single bumpy road leading to Hinamisawa. Goodness sake, Jin was at Mion's level at least. Or maybe an even better actor, either way. No matter what questions I pressed her with, she'd slip out of them like an eel. Still, you two look a lot so alike. You tied your hair back like Mion does to look exactly like her? Who knows? That's probably what would happen. We're identical twins through and through. In the past, we could just change our clothes and no one would be the wiser. I remember we'd sought places at every opportunity and fooled a whole lot of people. 
A middle-aged driver wearing a black suit heaved a heavy sigh like he were a butler. What's wrong, Kasai? That was a pretty deep sigh. Excuse me. I was just thinking that you haven't changed. You can see many years of hardship on the man's face through the rear view mirror. But poor man. Wait, Kirchan, your house is around here, right? Kasai doesn't know much about Hinamizawa aside from the road that goes to the Sonozaki main house. If you leave him to it, he'll take he'll take you all the way to Yagauchi. Yagauchi. I, I didn't want that. Stop at the narrow road at the next right. I'll walk from there. He stopped the car at the desired place. The driver, Kasai-san, got my bike out of the trunk for me. So sorry about that. Thank you very much for showing me home today. Was it Kaysan? Her name, that is. Uh, uh, yes. Be having various difficulties. But I believe she will grow tired soon. So please, endure things till then. He gave me a deep, deep look of sympathy. This guy has definitely been dealing with the Sonazaki sisters ever since they were little kids. Oh my gosh, who wants to bet he is like on... <laughs> wants to bet he's like on medication for like hypertension and stuff like that. Like... Chug, practically chugs Pepto-Bismol. However, like you be on son, he's a kind person at heart. Though so that means she'll be as much of a bother as me on, right? Man's face froze in a smile. His reply lost. Hey, back me up here. Bye, Keicha. We'll see each other again soon. They had to my sister for me too. Maybe I'll start going to Hinamizawa tomorrow. Don't you dare. You transferred in, I'll transfer out to a school in Okinomiya. Wow, that was really mean, Kei-chan. The lion, the witch, and the audacity of this bitch. <laughs> a short beep of the horn. The man gave a little wave to me from the driver's seat. Then the car withdrew into the dark night roads, leaving dust in its wake. And this entire day made no sense. I ran into Mion while I was with Xion and the former's expression like a pigeon shot with a pellet gun had finally begun to make a strong impression on me. But I want to know how we handle the... the, the doll situations. So... little... Fingers crossed for, for, for Kei-chan. He tries to figure out his way out of this one and how to smooth things over. Which, uh, oh. I can't forget about this. Time game breaks my brain. Okay. And we would smose, smosis, and figure out where to. Uh. Put it here, because it won't block. Uh, I don't think that should block any stuff up there. There. Oh, oh. Anyway. T 
so now to continue the actual game. Although, ah, hold on. Sir, one second. Ah, that's not it. That's not it. Okay. I think that's better. My mic was a little needed to be was my my boom arm was um going down when it need to be moved up some if if that makes <laughs> If my words may change them. But anyway. But let's continue. Oh, actually. Oh, pardon me. Oh, dear. I yawned right while I was doing that. But, uh, okay. Um. But, recap, okay. Um, so, aside from the restaurant shenanigans um, of, of defeating some, some uh, creepy dudes, creepy perverts, um, in, in battle, yes, um, uh, So we learned that apparently, uh, uh, we learned by Arena that so Keiichi had, or he learned that he apparently had done something that upset me on uh, very severely, um, and he was trying to figure it out. Um, uh, and Ended up going sort of in a sort of a quasi date with with Xion, and um, you know, it finally done him. Especially that basically it was that basically he kept on the fact that he kept on through like very some, especially through like a number of a series of initial action. And then followed by comments or whatever that of not recognizing um Mion's femininity, I guess is the way to, to to phrase that. Um We're not actually clear on to the degree of if there may be like romantic feelings involved in that. Um but definitely this him in effect like denying her as a, a woman in it accidentally um so he realized his initial mistake because one of the first things was the fact that instead of giving a doll that that he had gotten us a freebie from someone instead of giving it to like her he was like, oh, it would be weird if you had a doll. I'll give a go give it to, to Reyna. Um, so, was so she on or whatever? He was like, oh, well, there's the doll in the store, so I'll go buy. I'll go buy it for you. Go buy it for you, because he still thinks she on was me on, for sure. And then he goes in, buys a doll. Um. Uh of the exact same type that he didn't get if me on initially and who should be at the register working out there but it's actually me on while he's on the date he effectively sort of a quasi date with with Xion and buying the doll for Xion because he thinks Xion is actually me on as opposed to the fact that they're just twins, like that they were indicating for the whole time. 
Instead of this weird, like, alter ego thing he had. Yeah. So, so that's the, the catching up. So this is, uh, yes, I could say the next day. So the day after that, um, those, those shenanigans. It was a strange day where Mion was desperate to regain her composure. Every time our eyes met, she would say that she had something to do, or she had to use the washroom and run off. Unable to just watch, Reyna was taking care of her the entire time. Mion-san, she's acting really strange today. Oh, uh, hi, Sophie. I hope you're doing all right. We, we just started, although you just missed kind of like my, um, as far as actually kind of starting up the chat, the chapter itself. Um, so I just did a recap. <laughs> yeah, it's that. Um, which, oops, well, oh, uh, the very, very quick version is, so yeah, um, Keiichi keeps on, kept on making phone-headed mistakes that were, ac that were actually really upsetting to Mion by continuing to, to, by inadvertently denying her as a, a, her femininity, um, repeatedly. We don't know if there's any romantic feelings that Mion might have for Keiichi. That's not clarified. Clarif clar clarified. You're not sure. But he still kept on thinking me on with Xion that there was no whatever. So when he ends up on a quasi date with 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 Xion and he realizes messed up, he goes like to buy this doll that was sort of involved in like the begin like the first his first big major goof. Um, uh, and he runs in there, he's like, okay, I'm gonna go buy it to make it, to make up for it, to his apology. Goes in there, and of course, at the register, offering it, is actually Mion. Their witness that he is there to, he is buying a doll, the doll that she initially had wanted, but for her sister, Xion who is, looks for all intents purposes like they're on a date. It wasn't spe spe specifically a date, it just, they were out for a walk or whatever and at night, which just, so yeah. Shenanigans ensued. <laughs> yup, yup. No worries, no worries. And yes, up up top here is the um is but yes, I have the times game has broken my my brain. Which what what count did we get last time? I wanna say it was like eleven. So we'll see if if so we'll see how we do. I don't know. It, it'd be tough to top, top all the stuff that happened at the cafe. <laughs> oh my gosh, I hate hated so many of the things I had to read. It's like a long brain freeze. I know the whole story, but it's hard to explain. There are times when girls are emotionally unstable. Best to just leave her alone. Huh? Going around, I saw Reyna calling me from the hallway. Wondered what it was. Ichikun, over here, over here. What is it calling me over like this? Is, is it a secret? Um, that is, it looks like it was a disaster. <laughs> yep, yep. It's really the best word for it. Happened. Oh, 
Yeah. Me chan seemed pretty broken. I somehow got her working again. I'm surprised you managed it. To wonder all the things that duct tape can do. How did you uh exactly same way I do with the television. Just come at it from a 45 degree angle and hi yeah. So she did a Fonz maneuver, apparently. <laughs> and the first one up. Thank you very much, game. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Saying that, she made a chopping motion. You know, I can't tell if you're joking or not, right? She'll be fine by tomorrow. Also, there's something I want you to do, Keichi-kun. Didn't mean to do anything wrong, but I still feel guilty. I I'm listening. Thanks. You see, Michan is just going to pretend the last few days never happened. Never happened, huh? I see. Well, that's one way to run from it. So you see, Ichikun, if you pretend to, then Michan can go back to normal. Just doing something as simple as that. Is it really going to be okay? Please, until Michan gets her feelings in order, let's go with it. Uh, okay, I got it. I guess if it's a top... If it's a temporary stopgap measure, I, I I guess that's probably okay. As long as it's like a permanently we're never talking. <laughs> that would be bad. If it's the, can we hit pause on this until I can figure this out? Then. But that, that would make sense. It's not ideal, but like with a lot of things, that relationship and stuff like that, it's, it's, <laughs> it, it, it would be definitely workable, healthy-ish, which to be honest is about, <laughs> a lot of times is about the, is, as close to you can get most situations in life we're, we're healthy-ish <laughs> uh, somewhere on that goods on that fairly all on that on that spectrum over there close to the other side um the one at fault here was the one who knew about the entire situation and pretended to be Mion for an entire day. Shion. He never once said that she was Mion. Ugh. Am I supposed to be angry at? I mean... You couldn't have taken everyone at, their, at face value and just have, like, believed that there, in fact, was a twin. Sister, just... They're like... I mean, yeah, Shion did kind of take advantage of you being... Kind of a dummy on that, but... Seems somewhat self inf A lot of this seems somewhat self-inflicted. Seeing me stomping the ground impatiently, Reina giggled. But Keiji-kun, you knew as well that Michan has some cute things about her. Reina talked in a calm voice as her hair rustled in the wind. Yeah, I know that she'll never let it be boring. Good. 
Following this curt reply, Reyna looked up at the sky and stretched. As long as you realize that, Keichikun, these past few days will soon be nothing more than a story to laugh about. Hopping Reyna, I also began to stretch as I looked at the sky. Their sky towered into the distance. There's no club activities or anything today. I'm sorry, Keichikun, but just for today, can you go home by yourself? It'll all be back to normal by tomorrow, but just for today, okay? All it took for everything to go back to normal was to leave me on alone for today, and it was an easy decision to make. Got it. I can't say it directly to Mion, so I'll say it to you. I still feel kind of guilty about it, so I, I want to apologize. Ah, no. Rid of the problem was Keichikun saying something insensitive, right? So if you learned anything from this, you need to look a bit into gaining a sense of delicacy. Yup, yup. Right, right, I'll try. Otherwise, you know, help Keichi get back in touch with his, get, you know, I guess Keichi may need to be brought in, get in touch with his feminine side. Again, bust out the maid outfit. <laughs> you know there's one in his size, exactly. Make him wear it until he gets, until he learns how to be, how he learns how to, how to be tactful. Oh my gosh, why did I do that to- I just- I just gave myself own emotional damage there from- from picturing that. Ugh. Oh. Speaking of self-inflicted stuff. That day was the shortest day of my life. Reyna was talking to Mion while accompanying her around the entire time. Looked like a really fun conversation, so I reflexively thought about joining in, but I had made a promise not to. It seemed that Mion was also trying her best to ignore me. But likewise, I did my best to ignore her. For the first time in a while, I ate lunch alone. Mion and Reyna ate theirs by themselves. As I let out a sigh in my ashen mood, Rika-chan came over and patted me on the head. Both Keiichi and me learned a whole lot. Never say it like that. It made me sound like we were having romantic problems. Can't like that one bit. Hopefully the teacher wouldn't notice and call us to the, to the staff room after school or something. I'm sure that Keiichi will grow up to be a wonderful adult. Pat, pat. I do this... I mimic the sound without. I I patted my pop filter. Will that does that does that make a good pat pat sound? Probably might not even pick. It. <laughs> I didn't want to just smack it, because then <laughs> smack anyone's ear. It was very quiet. Oh, it would make sense. That's, that's... I, I can add it while saying pat, pat. <laughs> uh, Rikachan is the steadiest type, so maybe you'll grow up to be an amazingly wonderful adult. Of course. I grow up. I'll be super amazing. He's very humble, isn't she? <laughs> so I'm, I'm not doubting it. My, when I grow up, I'll be an amazing lady, you know. No matter how old you get, you'll still be a brat. You can put money on it. <laughs> what, what, what did you say? As Satoko snapped her fingers, a wash basin fell from above, hitting me squarely in the, in the head. Ow! You think you're doing, Satoko? Wait. 
As Satoko snapped her fingers, a wash, a wash basin fell from above, hitting me squarely in the head. So, wait. Did you, like, do some teleportation crap and... Oh my gosh, they used anime powers. Just make something fall from the sky. Well, not just anime, but just, like, cartoon powers. Dark magic. Yes, the dark cartoon magic of causing things to, like, just land on people from out of the blue. It's a trap! Yes. Peachy triggered her trap card. Bang smash. Pinch squeeze. It was a day I could thoroughly appreciate the value of having friends. So, do you think, like, KG should, like, you know, if he still wants to do it, you know, he could always show up outside Mion's place, you know, in a trench coat, you know, with a boombox over his head. Huh? Huh? I make funny. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> Today was Saturday, so school ended in the blink of an eye. really felt good to go home with the sun so high in the sky. On any other day, our club would have been, been up to mischief during our ample after-school time. But today, Rika-chan had a rehearsal for tomorrow's Watanagashi to go to. How's it going, Rika-chan? Do you have it down in practice? I'll try harder than last year. You were so exhausted and sweaty after last year's ceremony. She'll look far more fit for the role this year. I almost went on to full-on Southern Belle there. <laughs> Please look forward to the fruits of her training, I do declare. <laughs> the Watanagashi festival everyone had been talking about was tomorrow, wasn't it? The festival being in June felt a little early to me, but the onset of summer came quickly this year, so it fit the image of a summer festival pretty well. Okay, we'll be off then. Look forward to tomorrow. Good day to you all. Satoko and Rika-chan waved to us energetically, then left. You know, I never asked. Where is the festival happening anyway? I don't remember the that. I don't remember there being anywhere around here that seems suited for hosting one. They do it at Faruda Shrine. We went there for a walk one day, remember? It was that place with a really good view. Oh right, I remember. There was a shrine all the way up on that hill, wasn't there? It seemed far too grand for Hinamizawa. Throwing some shade on the town there, huh? You're say, saying Shinobizawa's ain't good enough to have a, a purdy scenic area. There's a great meeting hall in the shrine, too. The older people get together there and sing karaoke or practice calligraphy from time to time. It's more like a recreational facility than a simple shrine. I see. Guess it makes sense that it looks so grand then. Michan, is your festival is your, nah. is your family going to help us set up today? Yep, we have male hands for that. Most of our relatives come from town to help. Male hands, huh? Well, I mean, I have nothing to do at home today, so w would it be a problem if I squirmed my way in there to help out too? Huh? You want to help us at K-chan? I don't know if it'll bother you all. That's just kind of interested. We had bone dances and other festivals in the town I used to live. 
I didn't even know where they took place, much less wanted to help. You could say that I had absolutely no connection to the region. Having come to Hinomizawa, though, it really made me feel like this place was a home that I had returned to. Before I knew it, I harbored a little interest in the, in the small community activity of preparing for a festival the day before. I wonder if you'll be able to, Kichi-kun. There's a lot of building tents and setting up chairs. I hear it's pretty hard physical labor. I, I mean, I wouldn't be doing it alone, right? The more hands we have, the faster it'll go. Mion looked happy to hear that. But at the same time, her expression was complex, tinged with hesitation. Rene gave her the last push for me. It, it's decided then. You should go for it, Keichi-kun. He's all yours, Michan. Put him through the ringer. Well, I can't argue with a recommendation from Reina. Okay then, go home first, put on some work clothes, and come to the shrine. Oh, and you might want to bring a towel to wipe your sweat too. Got it. it may look scrawny, but I actually quite, quite like breaking a sweat under the hot sun. Careful you don't hurt your back, okay? Right, enough of my old man spiel. I'll go to the shrine too, as, as soon as I've changed. Michan, you do your best too. Bye bye. Mion waved vigorously to us and, and left. As far as I could tell from her gallant retreating figure, she seemed to have recovered from the weak state she had yesterday. Girls are quick to get over things. Michan is already fine. Right. Her switching back to normal so cleanly really makes it easy for me to talk to her. That true? I somehow somewhat doubt that. I don't know. Or it's probably complicated. I don't know. I smooth brain smooth brain desert, so I do that. <laughs> Kind of funny though, wasn't it? Kind of like Cinderella. Like, you can't meet her anymore once the magic wears off. Cinderella, Cinderella, night and day in Cinderella, do the dishes, do and They always make them holler. She runs around and circle till she be dizzy. Till they holler, keep her busy, Cinderella. Marina began to giggle a fair bit in amusement. Did she like this sort of thing? Incidentally, me going along with it gave me a weird, hard to describe feeling. Did I turn myself into a plaything? Or did they do it for me? Did they do it for me? I really had to read that back to make sure I read that correctly. I want to say I'm just being weird, but this game is also pretty weird. That f f f of that phrasing, so I've, I'm just gonna continue. <laughs> you think it's so funny? Then you should try pretending to be a different Reina too. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Be careful what you wish for. Sometimes foreshadowing. Well, would it be for? This more like feels more like. I guess back shadowing. I don't know. Don't go creepy eye, right? Don't go creepy eye. Hey, kun what kind of Reina would you want to meet? One with. With the bus size of at least 90. <laughs> bro. Bro. Bro.
should I? I'm I'm somewhat curious about to how bad of a how 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 much of a foot and mouth disease he has exactly by googling that would be <laughs> the terms I would understand. But do I really want that on my Google? <laughs> Oh, gosh. Huge duck. Oh, oh my gosh. Damn it, Gabe. Huge duckers that you're okay with me touching. <laughs> I have to respect that she doesn't just immediately smack it. <laughs> oh, Reyna, you are you are too nice for your own good. Just the head, head pat with the with the the. My my little mouse cursor. There you there you go. There there. Pat pat. Good. Too good for your own self. Your own good. She'd be great at cooking and make me lunch and come to see me. In I do that already. Pull Reina's head in a tight grip, then start to pet it. You're Reina Ryugi, right? Reina, not Reina. So you just stay as Reyna forever, got it? Thanks! Have fun helping set up the festival! You did not get slapped for that. Oh, just... Pet pets. Pet pets. And pets for Reyna. Got it. Let's meet up tomorrow. Okay, I hate that I'm having a look. Uh, I'm gonna have the weirdest crap on my face. Ah. Uh, okay, that's way too complicated. <laughs> it's for sight. I mean, to be fair, like, there's been, like, weirded stuff or whatever. <laughs> like, you could still end up search looking up weird, ser weird, searching for weirder things, or Googling weirder things, like, if you were running for, like, for someone running a D&D &D session. There's a meme where it's like having to Google like the aerodynamics of a cow. And it's and anyone who's has been involved in, has ever played any tabletop RPG knows that that's not <laughs> They may have not had to look up that specific thing or remember needing to make their DM look that up, but Something on that level and off the wall. Either that or searching some info that should almost certainly put you on a watch list. On like, will this stuff explode? Or what is this? But th that's a different thing. 
Anyway, I got changed right away and slinging a towel around my neck like Mion suggested, I set off for the shrine. I like this music, not gonna lie. At the shrine, there are many more people than you'd imagine even live in Hien was out with there. All cordoning off areas and setting up tent frameworks, chatting amongst themselves as they did so. Alright, where is Mion? The liveliness of the throng didn't make it easy to look for her. I searched around as if I already worked there, and suddenly, the principal called out to me. Hmm, it isn't my Barakun. Interesting. You come to help with the Watanagashi setup? Uh, uh, hello. Yes, I was just wondering if there was anything I could help with. How commendable your attitude is. Feel free to s sweat to your heart's content. Ha 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 ha. Spurned on by the principal. I came upon a ground of people. That a group of people, not ground. A group of people setting up tents. It's it's gonna be so interesting. <laughs> start. And I start. This, um. For for. It's gonna be interesting. Me starting to read me uh, um reading through uh, Lord of the Rings don't know and as a reminder to those that do that is tomorrow at 8 p.m central time not starting with the hobbit we're starting with um fellowship of the ring so the trilogy proper so but yeah i'm 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 looking forward to seeing how badly i can screw up on all the, on all the tolkien tolkienese names Oh, I'm glad. Mm. Yeah, and of course I'll I'll be uploading them up on uh, on YouTube. So it'll definitely be in the in a long haul thing because I'll be doing that in weekly installments. I have no idea how long it'll take. I don't want to make any promises because on like how long it'll take through stuff, you know. Oh, what's this? It's my Barachan. You come all this way to help us? I haven't found Mion yet, but I suppose I'd just get in her way if I ran into her. Yeah, I'm here to help. Just tell me where you need me. You young ones have all the vitality. Here, grab some work gloves. Ever built a tent before? No, never. Delighting in teaching a new skill to someone younger. Plenty of people have happily taught me all sorts of things. remember when I was a young cobalt and and grandpappy cobalt taught me how to first burrow I was stuck for three days I don't like to talk about it <laughs> at night I... I can sometimes... <laughs> okay, that's getting too... Oh, 
Haha, uh, anyway. Okay, kid, go inside the tent to tie up just the cords for the top. After that, we'll stand it up and tie the rest of them. Butterfly knots are okay, right? There and there. Do the loop de loop and pull. And your shoes are looking cool. All done? We're standing it up. One, two, three. But it was once nothing more than a collapsed tent. It was raised on four splendid legs before my eyes in mere moments. Oh, wow. Seeing it put together like this is actually pretty moving. Come on, no time to stare and wonder. We've got a lot more to do. We packed the tents into the truck. Go get them from there. They're heavy, so take some someone with you. I'm good. I may look scrawny, but I'm actually pretty strong. Whoa! Oh. I was trying to uh, channel my inner 90s Keanu Reeves, but I wasn't doing so well. Bill and Ted, excellent adventure Keanu Reeves. <laughs> It's genuinely so I like how crazy it's turned out. <laughs> anyway, that's but that's the size. They look light enough, so I thought they were, but they're heavy. That's why I told you to have someone help. Come on. Said the man, lifting it up with a grunt and taking it away under his arm. Either I'm weak, or are these old guys have all the su have all the superhuman strength? I mean, honestly, <laughs> those are that like know some of those like old dudes that have like just been uh that have like just done hard like physical labor, even if it wasn't necessarily their job or whatever, but just. For whatever reason, like, <laughs> it might as well be superhuman strength or whatever, because they got like those, what is it? Probably like develop some of those like muscles that like are, I forget what they're called, but there's like types of muscles that specifically like take long, long periods of time to actually just develop. So you may not, so it may not be like huge, like bulging muscles, but it's like just a lot of this, like. So someone may look kind of like wiry or, or not that, or pretty lean, but actually be like crazy strong. It's like smooth cycle. Like, that definitely seemed to fall, have fallen into that category. You're the youngest one here, so we're going to make you sweat for it. Do your best. Beer after work is the best. Uh, I'm a miner. But you're not digging. But up. Did I really just do that joke? Yes, I did. I apologize. Sweat dripped from my body. Knees weak, mom spaghetti. I had been fully and completely absorbed in helping them. I would never have thought the cold barley tea from the woman's society could taste this delicious. You're so young, make sure you drink a lot. Th thank you. It was then that I realized the crowd had formed near the shrine a ways off. When I took a closer look, I saw a girl dressed in shrine maiden garb, and a handful of old men looking like they were preparing for the ceremony together. Is that... Rika-chan? Hey, Rika-chan! Do your best! I shouted and it seemed like she heard me. 
Rikichan, positively exploding with vitality, answered with a smile. Aww. The older guys with me watched Rikachan as well with distant gazes. Rikachama is doing a good job. She's far more used to this than she did last year. The old lady who gave me the tea clasped what looked like a put like prayer beads in her hands and said, Rikisama, thank you. We thank you. Just like that, began to respectfully pray to her. Huh? Just remember that they called it the Ferude Shrine. Was it Rika-chan's full name, Rika Ferude? A man sitting next to me answered my question. That's right. Rika-chan's Ferude clan is ancient and honorable, and we have worshipped Oyashiro-sama for generations. Huh. Always gotten the feeling she wasn't quite your average person, but it turned out she was from an esteemed family. Her father, who was the shrine priest, died the year before last. She's really been doing her best to learn the rituals. The priest could have been see could have been here to see how wonderfully she's grown up. What? Rikachan's father passed away? Okay, break time is over. Let's get the chairs we're not using back to the gym in Okinomiya. Bakisan! Pull the truck around here and take a few people with you. All right, my barcoon, let's get to work on one last job. Get yeah. to make me do more work. Can't tell if they know I'm a miner or not, but the old older men all cheer me on, encourage me to do my best, and that the beer will be great. Kid, yeah, don't correct them. Just, just <laughs> now is your chance, kid. Some old codgers in a small, in a small town after our day's work. Yeah, they might. They're probably going to overlook it if you play your cards. Hey, John, working hard, I see. I passed by Mion, who's carrying a big cardboard box. It looked like she was right in the middle of working as well. Judging by the sweat seeping into her shirt, it seemed I wasn't the only one with his hands full. Yeah, I'm working my ass off. You work hard too. Beer's gonna be great. Her <laughs> work to the bone until the sun began to set and it started cooling off. was soon full-fledged night, and the clear sound of the higurashi eased the moderate pain I felt. The older guys began their night before drinking party in a tent a fair bit off, causing quite a ruckus. The shrine grounds, on the other hand, had turned into a lonely road, tickled by the cool evening breeze, despite being so festive just a little while ago. The wind felt good. I leaned on one of the stone guardian dogs at the front of the shrine. I gave my legs a good stretch as I left my my mind wander, and suddenly a paper cup filled with barley tea was thrust before me. Hey, John, great work. Here's some tea for you. You're so considerate. Thanks, me. Her sound sounded exactly the same, but it felt somehow different. Wait, you're... Hey, ya, uh, it's Xion. Don't go giving me on all the credit. She isn't considerate at all. Don't get us conf... She isn't considerate at all. Don't get us confused, okay? Xion, you little. Now that I've caught you, you're not getting away. <laughs> it was your mistake, Kei-chan. I've never said I was anyone other than Xion. I, I guess I can't argue with that. hee <laughs> hee. That's right, you're no match for my older sister, but I can't let you be a match for me either. Anyway, your tea. It's going to get warm. Ugh. Come on, please cheer up. I'm trying to make it up to you with this tea.
Have we seen Mion and Tian in the same room together yet? Yeah, we did. Um, that was uh, um, the big event, um, like where it left off last time, when it was the big chakra that finally like really got Kichi into hot water and where everything like went was a complete disaster was because he was that whole date thing or whatever that he sort of thought it was that's when it's he went in there um he went to go buy when he went to go and buy the doll we thought he was dying buying it for Mion but it was actually Xion because that was who was with them walking in the evening um when he has to go buy it the person attending the shop was Mion which shocked him and then of course Xion walked right in so they were both yeah so yeah both Keiichi and Mion were both just shocked and and confuddled Meanwhile, she was like, oh, we're on a date. He's buying me that toy. Well, she did come all the way here to give it to me. Yes, I'll accept it. I took the cup and downed it in one gulp. Then suddenly, ah! Uh, I heard a loud sh shout and it got stuck in my throat. Mion just walked by anyway. I knew it. Cough, cough, heck. <laughs> Which one is it this time? Is it the real Mion? Xion. Why are you hanging out with Kei-chan again? Because unlike you, I'm very considerate. Kei-chan was so sweaty, I couldn't leave him alone, so I brought him some tea. The lion, the witch, and the audacity of this bitch. <laughs> By the way, why are you holding two cups of tea? Mion's face went bright red. She tried to hide the paper cups behind her back. I, uh, er, well, this is... There's no way you, such a rough, timid, good sister of mine, would ever briskly bring a male classmate tea, is there? So what are they? What are those two cups of tea? <laughs> Sadly, I did not come up with it. It's what us, I came across it on memes. Uh, I mean, quite some time uh, a while back. Like, probably like a year or so or something. A couple years back, I think, now that I think about it. Anyway. Via de memes. These are, well, um, uh, rat. I, I was just so thirsty. I figured I'd drink too. <laughs> That's so like you. Come on, chug, chug. As she teared at her, me on down both the cups of tea, one after the other. I also, I kind of figured that might have been. <laughs> it's like, uh, these are both for me. Don't. What a fabulous drink that was. I expected nothing less from you. Hey, chan you give her a hand, too. Wait. Suddenly, this situation has gotten unbelievable. Mion doesn't usually get manipulated so easily like that. I've known for a while now, but Xion is terrifying. Mion, can't hold your own against Xion. I hate her, and lately I hurt, hate her even more. Just then, I heard the snap of a camera shutter. Oh my gosh, what is it this time? Ah! And the flag is... 
flashbacks, flashbacks. Evening, the festival's coming up tomorrow. Thanks for all your hard work setting it up today. Good evening. Oh, Xian Chan. Quite unusual for you to come here. Oh, hey, it's Tomatake and Takano san. Good evening. It's been a while, hasn't it? You're that transfer student I've been hearing about, Kichi My Baraku, right? Really did a bang up job today. I'm impressed. Not like I've seen this photographer guy before. Uh, have we met before? Glad you remembered. Passed by many times on the road, Kichikun. I'm Tomitake. I'm a freelance photographer from Tokyo. And do you recognize me? I I'm sorry, but I don't. She's Mio Takano san. You remember when you were at the doctor's office when you still ha had a cold, Kei-chan? Mio-san is one of the nurses who works there. Call me Takano. I'm pleased to meet you. I I wonder if she squeezed over the them like in the shrine ma like in the shrine storeroom. That's very thoughtful of you. Umitake san seemed to be quite entertained at the Sonazaki twins being in the same place, and he took picture after picture. I have heard about them, but this is the first time I've actually seen a pair of identical twins. You really do look exactly alike. We're not just alike on the outside. See, our underwear matches to- Oh my gosh. <laughs> and we are now at four. Oh, my gosh. God, you idiot, what the heck are you doing? Things have never been as lively as when the two of them are together. I thought they were exactly the same at first. I've started to get a handle on which one is which. Mion is Mion, and Xion, well, she seems a far better actor than Mion was. In the first place, somebody that could spurn me on so easily wouldn't have shown such weakness to those lard buckets at Angel Mort. If that was the case, then that cowardly behavior from that day was all. It was all a complete act. They were even more alike when they were little. I hear even their parents had a hard time telling which was which. That's really easy to imagine. I totally understand what they must have gone through. Takano gave me kind of an odd look, but explaining would have been a pain, so I did not bother. Tomitake, are you going straight back to Tokyo after you get your pictures of the festival? Yep, no, I would rather just stay here forever. Really adult things, that's all. I hope your photos win a fabulous prize soon. I've been praying for it. Thanks. Next time I come, I'll bring the pictures I took of you all today. My bar my Barakun, you did a lot of work today. You must be tired from all the physical labor you're not used to. Well, I'm tired, but it was still pretty fun. Ah, youth, I'm so jealous. Takano smiled with an adult elegance that no one in my circle of friends possessed. The wind caught her hair. She gives off an intelligent beauty. Ugh. This guy. Oh, why, hello, everyone. Seemed like our merry crowd was standing out this time. An overweight older man addressed us. And again, it was someone I thought I knew. I recall correctly, he's a policeman, isn't he? Oh, Oishi-san. Good evening. Doing a preliminary in 
security inspection for tomorrow? <laughs> Something like that. You know, if it isn't Tomotake-san, it's certainly been a while. I'm honored you remembered my name. You really do love Hinamizawa, don't you? The apartments around here are far cheaper than the ones in Tokyo. Just move... Uh, oh, guy speaking. You should just move here and get it over with. I know a realtor I can introduce you to. I appreciate the thought. I'd very much like to follow up on that. <laughs> All right. Everyone have a good year. And Happy New Year to the Sonazaki twins, too. Happy New Year, Detective Oishi. We appreciate your work. We'd like to end this year's festival with the least amount of inconvenience possible. That's pretty strict on me. <laughs> Detective Oishi left us with a low laugh and headed off to talk with some police officers standing a ways away. It gave me on a glance, saw her making an annoyed face. As if she were glaring bullets at someone she hated. Yeah, it'd be nice if the police didn't have anything to do during Watanagashi this year. <laughs> you like this place too, don't you? Oh, you mean to say you dislike it, Jiro-san? I quite enjoy such fantastic stories, you know. Especially with the times being so dry and it uninteresting. The curse of Oyashiro Sama, you mean? They said the secret word! Yay! Oh, it's going all downhill from here, isn't it? Curse. Tomitake used a troubling word, and suddenly someone tugged on my arm. Kei-chan, I'm pretty hungry. Wanna go to the tent with the drinks and have some candy and sweets? Hm, I'm up for that. Getting a little hungry as well. And he's hungry like the wolf. Okay, let's go. A moment later, Shion said something to, to Kano Komatake that stung my ears and gave me a start. I wonder who will die and who will disappear this year. I pulled back from Mion's grip, stopped abruptly. Chion, what did she say? Felt like the air around us dried out all of a sudden. L let's go, Kei-chan. They're, they're talking about something silly anyway. You still haven't told, called, still haven't told Kei-chan? I make it a point not to spread stories like that. Mion's cold and quiet tone and Mion's harsh voice were quite the contrast. Hey, wait, hold on. What are you talking about? You know something, then tell me. It doesn't feel right being the only one left out, you know? I don't understand this. Explain it to me. However, Mion didn't seem to be all at all willing to grant my request. She squeezed my hand in hers a bit. But when she realized I would hold my ground on this topic, she let go. I'm gonna go to the drinking tent first, then. You don't come soon, Kei-chan. There won't be any left for you. I get it already. I'll be there soon. Mion left, trotting towards a particularly noisy tent on the other side of the shrine grounds. Before she got there, she stopped and turned back around. I showed no signs of going after her, though. But she ran off. I could tell you if you haven't heard, I suppose. But it might be smart, smarter not to ask and go with her to eat dessert. And now you've already got my full attention here. I'm not going to leave without asking at this point. I think Kei-chan has a right to hear this too. My sister was just stealing that from you. Jian's voice was bristling with thorns, as if somehow blaming me on... What on earth are you talking about? I don't really like people acting so self-important. Kano-san, realizing how prepared I was, looked across the, the group. After confirming that there were no objections, she opened her mouth. 
Do you believe in curses, my Barakun? Curses? I think they're interesting, but I don't really... I felt their cynical stares and winced. It was like they were telling me it was stranger not to believe in curses. You're not wrong, Kei-chan. Curses are just superstition. Only natural that you wouldn't believe in them. Mm-hmm. Besides, you can take all the time you need to decide whether to believe in curses after you've heard us through, though. Said Takanasone, giving a little smile. Trying to scare me. At least that's what it feels like. All right, I'll start. Eichikun, you know about the Hinamizawa Dam project? Oh, yeah. The other day at Angel Mark, Chion, or Mion, rather, told me all about it. I mean, the plan for the giant dam that would flood all of Hinamizawa, right? That's right. Residents of the town banded together to fight it, and a fierce battle with the government unfolded. I've heard that too. The entire village united, using all the power at their disposal. Mass media, political influence, and other things fought the country. The way Mion described it made it sound like a boast. Oh, you know quite a bit about it. Yes, you're right. It's practically an epic tale. How just a thousand or so villagers banded together and rejected the government's plans. Did you hear this from my sister? She likes those kind of epics, you know. Yeah, she told me. There was, however, an office for the Hinamizawa Residence Opposition Faction. It was this shrine. You know the Assembly Hall? That's where it used to be. Now that the whole thing is over, the senior citizens just use it for group activities. At the time, though, it was their last bastion. Kanos Thun explained this, pointing a finger towards the Assembly Hall. I've been carrying things in and out of there all day. I mean, I would understand if they put an office like that in the mayor's house or something. But having an office on shrine grounds made it feel kind of like a base camp for Sengoku period warriors. Uh, that's the... Hey, someone doesn't know the Sengoku... The Sengoku period refers to uh, what's commonly also referred to as the Warring States period. Um, in Japan, which is about uh, the 16th century and the very, very, very beginning, like first 12 years or 20 years of the 17th century. So that's when you had the, so it ended with the, uh, um, the beginning of the, the Tokugawa shogunate um, and the uh, isolation of Japan into what, which was that period was then known as the Edo period. Just my little, the more you know. Probably most have heard that, but just in case. Since there's like a billion anime plots that did revolve around. Uh, anyway. That was basically the mindset, though. Placing the main force in the shrine dedicated to Oyashiro-sama, Inamizawa's guardian deity, was like a prayer for victory. Oyashiro-sama. That was definitely it. They mentioned Oyashiro-sama's curse before. Is it the same Oyashiro-sama? Do you know about Oyashiro-sama, Keichi-kun? Not good at school. I don't really need to. So I really need the history. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Yeah, uh, probably not surprisingly that a, that a weeb like me would. <laughs> Something like that. Although there were some really cool figures that happened about that, which is why there's so many. Um, uh. 
it being used as a source for like video games, drama, television shows, stuff like that. Um, it it is farmed for that. Do you know about Oyashiro-sama, Keiichi-kun? It's the name of the god worshipped at the shrine. It's said that he protects all of Hinobizawa. Well, I don't really know much about him. I see. I think Takano-san knows more about, about the rest. Tag, you're it. Oh, well, this is generally the whole story. Oyashiro-sama is the ancient god passed down in Hinamizawa, and the villagers say he has been protecting this sanctuary from the poisons of the outside world. Anyone else feeling like they can get in like Brigadoon vibes? Anyone? <laughs> I mean, not like the blood of the, but I guess, I don't know. If you don't know, it's, 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 it's an older musical thing. Um, but it's basically the story about this, uh, uh, it's a, about this Scottish village that it only shows up that's sort of is like frozen in time in the sense that well actually it's sort of like it only appears once every was it a hundred years actually um and then it appears for a period of a day and then it disappears um and all of that is because this agreement or whatever of one of the founders basically like or some important person like made basically like if I remember if I remember the story right, made a deal with God that to sort of protect the town of just like to do for that sort of arrangement. So basically the town disappears and everyone goes like as and everyone's like asleep. And then it comes back, everyone went there for a day, and then, and there was a musical or whatever about, um, that these two Americans stumble across the, the village, like during a hunting trip in Scotland. I love mysterious places like that. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a, um, like a, uh, Play an older like musical or whatever. Um, can't remember when it came out or whatever. So it's definitely an end in, uh, inner story. Um, but yeah, Brigadoon. I remember. I think it spelled something like that. And there's a love story and stuff like that, so. If you want to look into it, there you go. Hmm. Anyway, or might just because of, like, the, you know, some sort of otherworldly force or whatever, like, protecting a protecting a village or whatever, and then they're sort of weird stuff. So, which I'm wondering if that's kind of... I'm imagining all the chapters or whatever will sort of play into this.
essentially he's a basic standard guardian deity. I guess you can find that sort of god anywhere you go. There's research into whether worshipping Oyashiro-sama is a manifestation of a kind of elitism too. What I mean is that the worshippers might think of themselves as chosen people. Believing yourself chosen, a nationalistic belief that you're part of a superior race, that you're a special clan chosen by the gods. They believe that they're a superior clan, so they believe strongly in cooperating with others, but they also end up being exclusionary towards other clans. Won't go into too much detail, but it's the sort of national and religious ideas that lead to war. Of course, that goes for Japan, too. Long time ago, the people of Hinamizawa strongly believed themselves different from humans, but they were above them. They believed that the interaction with the lower world would sully their souls. Now everyone believed that if one from the lower world came to the village, they would be sullied and suffer the wrath of Oyashiro-sama. Apparently, that kept everyone away. Villages that hate outsiders come up in all the time in Kendaichi novels. This was once a run-of-the-mill village of xenophobes. Well, they'll deny it to preserve their pride. It was all a long time ago, after all. Things are different now. Xion followed up quickly, having sensed the thorns in Tomatake-san's words. Tomatake-san, embarrassed at what he said, scratched at his head. Hmm... But this shrine worships Oyashiro-sama, thanks of Hinozai as holy ground, and it's a symbol of their traditional hatred of the outside world. I get it, so that's why they chose the shrine of Hinozawa's guardian spirit as their base of operations, to resist the Sully Dam construction project that came from the outside. Correct. Smiled Takano, pleased. She must dislike stupid people. Superstition, every last bit of it. The villagers gave everything, desperate to oppose the dam construction. And right in the midst of it, the incident drove home the f drove home the finishing blow. Oyashiro-sama's curse. The person managing the construction side of the Hinabizawa's dam was murdered. Four years ago, I believe. Took the newspapers by storm. Do you remember it? No, not really. He had a fight with a subordinate and was beaten to death with a pickaxe. His limbs and head were, were torn off and their remains disposed of. One of those dismemberment homicides. They were all the rage at one point. Oh my gosh, they were so in season and on fleek. Dismemberments, am I right? They're so 80s now. All about cannibalism now. The crap is wrong with that. Sorry, just the way they phrase it, they were all the rage at one point. <laughs> it's an interesting word to describe it. Yas, queen, you know, back then, it was, you just had to have, it wasn't a party until you had dismemberment. Such a gruesome incident. It was just that. Incident. Person caused the incident after all. Did they really put it down to the curse? Then the following year, the man who had organized Hinamizawa's group of dam proponents, he fell from a cliff while on vacation and died. Apparently, it was an accident. Of course, most of Hinamizawa was hostile towards him. The police were all over the case as if it were a homicide, but in the end, it was judged to have been an accident. Now it's an accident. This is the most curse-like one, but it's still far-fetched. And then on the next year, this time, 
The priest of this shrine contracted an unknown illness and suddenly died. This may sound a little rude, but the old priest was kind of a wait-and-see type. The whole village was in an uproar about the dam, but he just kind of didn't seem to want to bother. The shrine was the symbol of the opposition movement, and its priest, well, his attitude worked against him. The villagers at the time had hoped for a leader, but their hopes were betrayed. Some people were apparently pretty angry too. Though at the time, all the older people were like, this is Oyashiro-sama's curse. That's what they said. It did seem like every year, dam-related people, yeah, dam-related people the village had resentment towards were dying. It was pretty creepy. Oh, and also, it's interesting. All of these incidents and accidents always happen on the night of the Watanagashi Festival. W what? See, starting to sound like a curse now, isn't it? I make the same face when I tell people about curses that happen on that day, you know. <laughs> That's how originally they were gonna first like reveal on like uh on the Friday the thirteenth movies. Oh yeah, today was my son Jason's birthday who died. Seriously, who the crap has this face? <laughs> At a curse that happens like tomorrow. Someone might die from a curse. Lol. Imagine if how th that was like the Brendan Fraser mummy or whatever. That the guy, you mustn't open the book. Like. Oh, you're about to open the cursed book that I had grabbed initially. Lol. And the year after that, in other words, last year, the sister-in-law of the man who was the leader of the dam proponents, the one who accidentally died, was discovered dead, having been beaten to death. She still got that freaking face. Talks about being beaten to death. Of course, they caught that criminal. See? Really seems like a curse, huh? The Mao. Four years in a row. Each one of the incidents and accidents were relatively commonplace. Every single one of them happening on the night of the festival? Worshipping Oyashiro sama? That's that's not normal. The old folks have been blindly accepting Oishiro-sama's curse because of the incidents these past few years. Even younger people, too. At first, they thought it was stupid. Now, nobody makes fun of it. Yeah, I can see where she's coming from. Even me, if I didn't think that there was a curse at all. Thinking about all these incidents like this makes me feel like it's real. For example... Just look at the preparations for the festival you were doing today. Everything might have gone crazy during the battle against the dam. Just a few years ago, the Watanagashi festival was never this well attended. But I guess you're right. If we didn't have a way of Shiro Summit to talk about, we wouldn't all be coming to a festival like this, huh? There's a lot of people who say that infidels might be punished that they really need to go to Oishiro-sama's festival. Shion nodded as if she were mocking herself. But how about now? Ichikun, starting to get the feeling that maybe, just maybe, the curse is real, aren't you? Or what are you? Chicken, Colonel Sanders. You, you can't just laugh off people related to the damn construction project all dying like that. Even I feel like this now, and the more superstitious members of the village must feel stronger than that. 
Well, I mean, I still don't think there's a curse. I can understand that those believe there is, though. Wow, Kei-chan. You can really keep a cool head about this. Beyond grin, realizing I'd rejected the curse. If it's neither a curse nor a coincidence, then what should we make of these incidents? Well, I mean, if it's not a curse, then it would be coincidental. Kano said, smiling playfully as opposing a riddle. Riddle me this, Keiji-san. Neither a curse nor a coincidence. Every year someone dies. Unless wait, unless it's somehow a clue. That will make sense later on. Quick. Tell Blue to put it in his note in the notebook. What should we make of that then? Mitake-san, catching on the fact that I had no idea what to make of it, opened his mouth and came to my aid. Mikano sent is suggesting that it might be the work of real people. Huh? Simple process of elimination would have got me there. I was a little taken aback at not having realized that answer immediately. Well, think about it. If it's neither a curse nor coincidence, then people must be willingly carrying it out. The only explanation, right? Pressed to Kano-san. I smiled bitterly in spite of myself. Here I was just a few minutes ago thinking the very concept of a curse was absolutely absurd. When she suggested it was someone's doing, I ended up thinking it was in any way it could be a person. But Takano-san was right. It was either a curse or it was a person's doing. If unrealistic things like curses didn't exist, the obvious next step would be start to start thinking it was people behind it. But if that was the case, I glanced at Shion. If the culprit is a person, then it'd have to be someone from Hinamizawa. That's what the police officer Oishi-san thinks right now, too. Hey, wait. That can't be... Thought I now knew the reason Mion didn't want to talk about this. If Oyashiro-sama's curse really existed, that's fine. It would be divine judgment for the damn project business. However, if Oyashiro-sama's curse didn't exist, which it obviously didn't, then the culprit would most likely be someone from Hinamizawa. The villagers have worked desperately to oppose the damn construction project. I knew they had all used sorts of methods to fight against it. One of those methods was... Maybe people whisper that Oishiro-sama's curse be the doing of a secret group in the damn resistance movement. He undryingly put words to my exact thoughts. Of course, I didn't expect it. She was from Hinamizawa, but I didn't think she'd come out and say it herself. If you calm down and think about it, anyone would come to the same conclusion. There wouldn't be a motive for anyone but people who benefit from opposing the TAM project, right? I guess that's true. Admitting to the existence of a darker side of the damn con of the damn conflict would be rude to Mion, who spoke of it so highly. I couldn't just accept Xion's seemingly logical viewpoint. One more thing. The police probably don't know this. There's proof that someone from Hinamizawa committed these crimes, and the people of Hinamizawa know it. Wh what? Xion rebukes me. Me to keep my voice down. Sorry, but proof. What is it? It's the fact that one person dies and one more disappears. One more person disappears. That mean that someone besides the one who died from the curse was a sacrifice? What do you mean by disappear? They just vanish and you never see them again? That's right. Suddenly, and without a trace. As she spoke, Yon pretended to do a trick with her hands like she was you were making a magician's hat disappear. 
One dies a mysterious death, and one disappears, never to be seen again. A strange vanishing act. But then why? How does that equate to someone from Hinuizawa being the culprit? Well, actually, Hinuizawa has this one really old legend. It's about how people offer sacrifices to Oyashiro-sama to calm his wrath. S sacrifices Yes. They say they used to wrap a living person up in a bamboo mat and let them slowly sink down into a bottomless swamp. Kano-san, though explaining something pretty terrible, has a look of glee on her face as she did so. As far as I can glean from the literature, it actually took three days and three nights for them to sink. See, even people a long time ago like symbolism. As the so body sunk, Oyashiro-sama's anger would be quelled. Both were submerged into the deep. Ah, uh, miss. Body sunk, Oyashiro-sama would be quelled. Both were submerged into the deep. Hee hee hee. That's the part I missed. Seriously, crap is wrong with this chick. This chick be cray cray. Get away from her. Ichi, I don't like this woman. Anyone who talks about that stuff and then goes, tee hee hee hee. Just, just. That's when you back away slowly. Hano-san was the only one laughing at this. Is she telling a joke or something? Xion didn't move to deny it, but I felt a difference in temperature between her cool expression and Kano-san's. This whole conversation, well, I think you can imagine after hearing it, but it's the secret history of Hinamizawa. Everyone who has been in Hinamizawa for a long time knows it. They don't talk about it. Kano-san's not from here, but she knows quite a lot. She really likes local history, folk legends, stuff like that. She learned about it all by herself, too. I'm really not all that amazing. Just curious, that's all. Like a child. I just want to see scary things for the fun of it. Omotake-san laughed, a little bit embarrassed. Wait a minute. What does that mean? The other person who disappeared during the incidents. You're saying they're offered as a sacrifice? Yeah. He answers in one word before anyone else can speak. Someone dies, and someone disappears. Hmm. Well, whether they actually get sacrificed or not is a different issue. But every time something happened in the past, one person died and one other person disappeared. For example, the first one, where the damn site manager was killed. Apparently one of the people responsible for that still hasn't been arrested. Could it, couldn't that be that he just managed to get away? don't see why you should treat him as a sacrifice. Well, that's basically what I think, too. There is also the year after that with the leader of the dam proponents. But he said he fell from a cliff and dialed while on vacation, right? Apparently, his wife fell as well. The police investigated fervently, but they were never able to find the wife's corpse. The river under the cliff was pretty high at the time, though. He could have just been buried under the sand at the bottom of some lake downstream or something. Perpetrator of a dismemberment like that wouldn't want to be caught. They'd be desperate to run away and hide too. Thought I'd heard about cases where the corpse wouldn't surface after the person drowned in a small river like that. She vanished because of an unfortunate accident. I still don't see the connection to sacrifices. If you took each of the past incidents in turn... None of the disappearance evoked the terrify a terrifying of an image. A year after that, with the priest suddenly falling ill and dying, much clearer, his wife left a suicide note. They found it in their house the night the priest died. It said something about the lines of her pulling Oishiro-sama's wrath through her death. The curse is 
seems to turn up in this one, though. Well, you may never know the truth of the matter. The swamp the wife drowned herself in was the giant bottomless one Takano mentioned before. The police investigated, but all they could find were several possessions. They never found the corpse. The police sec suspect it was a fake suicide, and they're still investigating it now. Someone dies every year, and in the same way, someone goes missing every year. Is he trying to tell me that everyone who vanished was kidnapped with some extremely efficient means, dumped into the bottom of swamp, still alive, and drowned to death? But a curse. That's unbelievable in its own right. And the next year... What... What was it? The damn proponent's sister-in-law? She was killed? And the same way someone dis Disappeared. It was a boy around my age named Satoshi Hojo. He's the nephew by marriage of the woman killed. Chion cut, cut in with a slightly strong tone of voice. She knew the boy who had disappeared pretty well. At least that's the vibe I was getting. Well, that about sums up, e sums everything up. One person always dies. One person always suddenly disappears. Leaving the suddenness aside. The fact was that each incident involved one person disappearing. So that means the first person who dies is because of Oyashiro Sama's curse. And the second person who vanishes is because the villagers sacrificed them? Is that it? Hey, Chan, there is no curse. Somebody kills the first person under the guise of the curse, and somebody takes away the second person to be a sacrifice. But, Chion, that means that. that means the criminal is in the village. That's what I've been guessing from the start. It's pretty shocking, though, you know. We live in the Showa period. It's kinda hard to believe people are committing murder like it's nothing, using some ancient justifications, huh? And have any to, thing to do with our discussion. I got the feeling that maybe Shion didn't like Hinamizawa very much. Mion enjoyed talking about Hinamizawa and its epic tales, though she had avoided talking about Oyashiro sama's curse. She didn't paint Hinamizawa in a good light, no matter how you looked at it. He was trying not to give me a bad impression of the village. She didn't say anything. Eon, on the other hand, was somehow different. She wasn't rejecting the concept of a curse to purge Hinamizawa of this bad impression, but rather, because she strongly believed that a member of the village was the criminal behind this. Her, con her conviction seemed a bit removed from the sense of community held by the people of Hinamizawa. Once upon a time, they looked so alike you could, you could mistake one for the other. Talking to her now, I was getting a powerful feeling that Shion had a completely different personality than Mion. It's, it's taking you... It's... Taking you this long, huh? Then everyone else, they all think someone from Hinamizawa did it, right? Neither Shion nor Takano answered that. The deafening silence told me all that needed to be said. Then let me ask another question. If someone from Hinozawa is the culprit, then who is it? Neither Shion nor Takano-san had a reply to that question either. What may have been rude to ask, I had hoped they wouldn't have one. The reason I asked was to argue that their explanation that the culprit from Hinozawa was nothing more than one possibility. Shion caught on to my plan. She gave a pained smile at my petty spite and opened her mouth to speak. All I said really just amounts to circumstantial evidence anyway. If any of us knew who it really was, we'd have gotten them into police hands already. That's what anybody. Then what about Takano-san? She too smiled dryly as Shion had and opened her own mouth. Um, well, I'd like to clear one thing up. I'm not a detective or anything, all right? In all honesty, I'm not really interested in who the culprit is. <laughs> Takano san, you sure are a handful. Omitake san gives a better laugh at her surprising opinion on the matter. 
You see... You see, I just like cruel and atrocious ancient traditions and fairy tales. I only enjoy them from a curious onlooker's perspective. So even for this string of incidents, it's not so much finding out who the culprit is, but enjoying thinking about how the old traditions displayed by the incidents themselves still seem to have some pretty deep roots around here. Though she described herself as nothing more than a curious onlooker, her smile was as sharp as the tip of a blade. Women like her felt very strange and a little scary to me. Maybe it's just that I was in fearful awe of the person whose emotions I couldn't comprehend. Well, I don't think any of this is interesting at all. The Watanagashi Festival is coming up tomorrow, but I don't want anyone to die or disappear. Tomorrow, huh? That's right. It completely slipped my mind. A string of murder incidents people attributed to Oyashiro-sama's curse. It wasn't over. Last year's incident wasn't the end. Then tomorrow night at the festival. Someone die? Someone disappear? I do wonder who will die, die tomorrow. And who will disappear, though? Kano said, running a comb through her hair with elegant movements. The thin smile and a voice that nearly made me shudder. She almost looked like she was enjoying the thought of the incidents that could happen tomorrow. Then out of the blue, we heard a loud round of applause. They seemed to be ending the drinking party early. God, I was making me on wait this whole time, wasn't I? I should go back to her soon. You're teasing the kid too much, takano son. Okay, she thinks it's all true. He, <laughs> I apologize. It's that bad habit of mine again. Said Takana-san, sticking out her tongue bashfully. The strangeness in her expression was nowhere to be found. When Takano sees an innocent child like you, she can't help wanting to poke fun at them. It's a real bad habit. Our definitions of poking fun seem to be very different, good sir. Ichikun, you listen to everything so earnestly. She ended up getting carried away. Unlike Takano-san, Tomitake-san seemed like a totally normal person with common sense. Or a person that isn't a complete dick, apparently. I'm apologizing after realizing what kind of impression they'd given me. Stuff Takano said she said is all fiction. And if it made you harbor any p bad impressions about Hinamizawa, we apologize for that. Jeez, Jiro-san. You apologize too, Takano-san. Tell him you're sorry for scaring him. Takano-san and Tomitake-san were arguing and messing around now. The strained air around us had already dissipated. Hey, Chan, you should get going soon, too. Leon is the jealous type. He sees me. She'll probably start a fight. I'll just be going home. Really? Then I'll go see what Mion's doing and apologizing for making her wait, I guess. Sorry for being such a nuisance, Keichi-kun. you tell Mion we're sorry for borrowing, borrowing you for so long? Uh, yes, I don't think telling her will make her feel any better, but sure. Umitake-san and Taka Takano-san. Standing next to each other, both began to chuckle. Okay then, Keichi-chan. Let's try and run into each other at tomorrow's festival. We'll see each other. I mean, it's us we're talking about after all. we making so much trouble, it'll be hard for you not to find us. Ian and I said our goodbyes to Tomitake and Takano. Before we could leave, Takano called out to us. Thanks for listening so earnestly to what I had to say. You're just so good at listening. I had a great time talking to you. Good at listening? No, not at all. I was just in a state of perpetual bewilderment from all the shopping top, from all the shocking topics being thrown at me, one after another. Did you like my story today? Well, it was pretty interesting. Then I'll tell you some some more sometime, okay? There's a lot of pretty interesting legends and fairy tales about Hinamizawa. Of course. A lot of strange and creepy ones, too. I'll choose a bunch of my favorites and tell you about them. 
I was kind of happy, but kind of worried. Can't help but smile dryly and scratch at my head. Ichikun, you can go now. Gano is just messing with you. They say goodbye again and run off. I hear Tomatake call out behind him in a clear voice that we would see each other at the festival tomorrow. When I went to the tent, Mion was waiting for me and she was nowhere to be found. I made her wait so long. She got mad and went home. After asking some adults passing by, I heard that she went home talking to some relatives. Yeah, I shouldn't have done that. But my regret for having made Mion wait wasn't enough to triumph over the impression to Kano-san and Shion's uncanny story left on me. Uh, I think maybe you should get out the boombox and trench coat. Blast out the Peter Gabriel. Just apologize. Mion, I'm sorry. You mean so much to me. I'm sure she'll dig that, right? Serial murder incidents had happened four years in a row. Tomorrow's events make this the fifth? The possibility that someone from Hinemizawa was carrying this all out under the guise of the curse. Queer tradition of ritual sacrifice, entirely unbecoming of the Showa period we live in. I regretted a little. It was too late. None of those creepy stories had anything to do with me. I should have let Mion pull me away from that crowd. I felt a little ashamed about letting my cheap curiosity get the better of me. You have received... New tips from the scrapbook one, two, three, and festival around the corner. One second. I need to get some water in. All right, let's find out what we can from these tips. Sure, they'll say to stay in school. From the scrapbook one. Oyashiro-sama's curse. In the ancient Onigafuchi village, the anger of Oyashiro-sama, his curse, was feared above all. However, it is seldom stated anywhere. What eventually happens and what sort of divine judgment curse Falls them when Oyashiro-sama is angry. From various reports, all hell will break loose. Demons will come flooding out. The miasma from hell, hell will flood outward and kill every villager, letting not a single one escape. The ones evoking image of the village being annihilated stand out the most. Those terrifying ideas of divine punishment were in alignment with many other religious beliefs regarding the apocalypse hell, and it's easy to imagine that there are just ways of convincing people to obey the teachings in order to prevent such an end. The conditions for inciting Oyashiro-sama's wrath are likely the same as the taboos in Onigafuchi village. I believe that when an act was performed that violates one of these taboos, Oyashiro-sama was termed angry. In order to quell his anger, he would perform the aforementioned sacrificial ritual. Okay, scrapbook two. The human sacrifice ritual. The sacrificial ritual was a simple drowning involving plunging sacrifices into Onigafuchi swamp it was considered hallowed. Of the rituals of Onigafuchi village, this one was unique in that the sacrifice would sink solely over the long course of three days and nights. I believe that it wasn't so much the killing of the sacrifices that was important, but rather 
is symbolizing of them sinking as the submerging of Oyashiro-sama's anger. For that purpose, they must have had a passion for learning various methods for keeping the sacrifice from sinking too quickly to force them to sink more slowly. Unfortunately, as far as I can tell from the records, those methods were not recorded. My thoughts are that they may have used logs or some similar material to create a raft, then set up a scaffold on there, hung the sacrifice up with ropes, and let them sink little by little over time into the swamp. And then Shrek would come by and yell at them for making a mess. But um, shh, cause, cause it's a swamp. <laughs> However, if that were the case, it would not be strange if the ritual implements used for such a ceremony were honored as holy and enshrined somewhere. Implements used for the ritual. Ritual tools. You to to yeah. Ritual tools. Tools tools. Ritual tools utilized for ancient religious ceremonies are commonly referred to as implements or ritual implements. And even now, some of them are enshrined on the property of Furuti Shrine and the three families. However, the identifiable tools are all decorative, and none of them appear to have been used in rituals governing the dark side of Onigafuchi village. As the Edo era came to a close, and many traditional rituals were lost, were they lost as well? Or perhaps buried in the darkness? I don't believe so. Both the implements used on the night of the Feast of Onik Onikakushi and those used during the sacrificial ceremony must still exist, enshrined away from the eyes of the masses. Without a doubt, they exist here, today, at this very moment, in Himizawa. They could even be behind you. Also, I'm nearly certain where they've been enshrined. Rosanks, what was once locked steadfastly, has, for some reason, changed this year to a cheap-looking padlock. He may be able to do something about such a lock. However, it's not far from the assembly hall, or is it ever far from the presence of people. However, I will not give up. The night when it becomes a blind spot to every villager in Hinomizawa is coming soon. Soon it will be Watanagashi. Wait. So who wrote the scrapbooks then? Was it from one of the vic was it from one of the Vix? Interesting. Festivals around Zakona. Rabble, rabble, rabble. Hey, are you worn out already? Tomorrow's the real thing. We're gonna be partying until morning, until the very end of it all. Got it? Got it. I'm gonna give it everything I've got. Wahaha! <laughs> Alright then, youth is the greatest. Good work, everyone. Tomorrow was Watanagashi at last. Let's get some shut eye in and save our energy for tomorrow night. Tomorrow was finally Watanagashi. Festivals are split into two groups. Those who enjoy them, and those who support them. The former only need to prepare their minds, but the latter needs not only that, but also painstakingly crafted plans and preliminary arrangements. While well, the general majority attending goes about enjoying the festival without a care in the world, it will be strained the whole way through. Why? You sure as hell know why. Because the beer after everything's over is the best damn beer you'll ever have. Ha ha ha! Times like these, it's best to have energetic, physically fit people. Wouldn't it be worth it if you didn't do your best until the end, enjoying it the whole way? Oh, he's here. Mishisan came in. Everyone hurried to stand up. Hello, everyone. Excellent work out there. Oh, you can be at ease. Thank you, sir. Not even my seniors, who usually talk big about themselves, can hold a candle to Oishisan. We all bow as if he were one of those cheering old as if we were one of those those cheering squads of old. Kuraudo o Kuraudo Oishi. A detective just waiting to retire. 
one who doesn't pay much mind th to rules and regulations, and doesn't do too much in the way of real work. He looks like a rotten old man with a penchant for dirty jokes. My seniors, though, tell me he was a real fighter in his younger days, that he may or may not have quite a heroic legend trailing behind him. Anyway, he surely had much more dignity and presence in the room than the section chief who came in with him. Everyone, I really thank you for your hard work on the preparations for the festival tomorrow. Everyone present stands upright and lends their ear to the chief's directions. We're on heavy alert for any thrill-seeking criminals expecting another incident like last year. I need all of you to focus your energy as much as possible in your mission to prevent any crimes from happening. Yes, sir. Of course, it would be best if nothing happened. However, everyone, please assume that an incident will, in fact, occur. Prevention is number one, but it probably won't be enough. This year, too, someone will die and someone will disappear. There's really no doubt about it. <laughs> everyone, apart from the section chief, smiled painfully. Wishy son, that won't do. You need to be more serious about this. The important part isn't, isn't to get past the night of the festival, to be able to quickly, swiftly, and aggressively pursue whatever does happen tomorrow night. I won't tolerate anything less than your best. Flinch those cheeks, I'm going to rip all the skin off the ghosts of Oyashiro-sama's curse. Yeah. Once again, I feel the need to mention that, you know, Maybe the police department for the, in this local vicinity just sucks. Because if they're automatically assuming, talking about curses and stuff like that, and not a sense of like, you know these guys think it's a curse, right? Yeah, well, we don't. Oh yeah, okay. Sorry. Sorry for being dumb. You know, or at the very least, treating it like... They, there's an actual, like, perp and stuff like that. You know, uh, maybe it says something about their, um, their, their, their dubious abilities. Um, I'm just saying. In the, in the prologue, they did not evoke the best, um, uh, they did not give me the best impression. And they continue to do so. They're not winning in any awards. Just saying. Probably not get the... Probably won't get the next chapter done, but we'll make some progress in it. Wow! It's Keiichi-kun! Good morning! Good morning! Reina was ecstatically waving her arms at me, already brimming with energy. What do you mean, good morning? It's already evening. Say hello or something. But, but, this is the first time I've seen you today, so I think good morning is right. It's right. I got it, I got it. Okay, then good morning it is. Good morning, Reyna. I grabbed Reyna's head and rubbed it with my hand. He squirmed, reveling in the motion like a cat. Hey, Keiichi... Keiichan. Sorry about yesterday. I left without telling you. Uh, no, it's my fault. Sorry for what making you wait so long. Are you talking about setting up for the festival yesterday? How was it, Keiichi-kun? Did you do your job properly? The slight muscle pain throughout my body and my sluggish movements were already obvious. 
I did great. I'm pretty worn out th now, though. I grin dryly and the three of us break out into laughter. Where's Satoko and Rikachan? Are we meeting up with them at the festival? Yep. Rikachan's actually been there since yesterday because she has such an important job. I think Satoko-chan stayed with her. They're already at the shrine. Right, I just remembered. Today was Rikachan's big performance. She'd been practicing especially hard for this day. As her friend, I need to make sure I went and cheered her on. All right, let's go right away. Yeah. As we got closer to the shrine, we started passing by more people and seeing a lot of parked cars. It began to get noisier too. I thought I could hear something like a Bond dance song. Without being able to restrain my impatience, I dashed out the entire flight of stone stairs. Ichikun, going too fast. Wait for me. Man, Kechun, you're Kechan, you're such a little kid. Oh, the shrine grounds. They were packed with people. It was a festival if I ever saw one. Wow, they went all out this year too. Amazing, amazing. They're coming from Hinamizawa. Huh? The bedridden old man from Kim Kimiyoshi Branch family is here too. I think that old guy went home from Watanagashi last year and stayed in bed ever since. Yeah, there are a lot of villagers here that I didn't really know. They must have all been pouring in just for today. Oh, it's Toko-chan. Hey! Oh, if it isn't everyone. Yes, hello to you all. Yo, Satoku. Satoko. There's a lot of people today. Don't get lost in the crowd, okay? Who do you even think you're talking to? Satoko, too, seems somehow energetic. Of course, I'm the same way. Huh? Where's Rikachan? She still has free time, doesn't she? Rika was giving her respect to the mayor and other important people. She shall come before long. I see. Rikachan is the shrine maid for today's festival, after all. Probably a pain for her to say hello to all the elders. It really is a pain. Hello, everyone. Uh, how? Rika-chan! I, I, I want to take you home! Rika-chan wore an immaculate shrine maiden outfit that looked fresh off the shelves. It was a perfect fit for her, her somehow mystical appearance. How does it fit? It's not too long, is it? My grandma gave me some safety pins just in case the sleeves are too long. It's alright. It really is comfortable. As she spoke, she began to do some twists and stretches. It's great! It's great! It's so cute! How? Oh. There was approximately one person here getting a nosebleed from watching Rikachan move. Kichikun, do you, don't you think she's cute? Don't you? If you don't, then she'll be all mine, and I'll take her home with me. I think she's really cute. Totally cool. Enough that I want to pretend to be her big brother or dad and take pictures with her. We take a picture from two different places and make it stereoscopic. We can eat or rather stare at a real life Rikachan at our houses whenever we want. Ah, that sounds great. That sounds fantastic. Raina's eye and mine glittered with stars as our noses bled and we drooled. Aw, oh, thank you, uh, sir. Thank you, Fox Glove. Thank you, thank you, and thank you for coming by. Rika, you'd best stay away from them. Yes, or I might get locked away in a basement somewhere. <laughs> the delivery of that, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, darn it, game. Ha, ha, ha.
You look like you're enjoying it though, Rika-chan. Plow through my... Plow through my small children today. <laughs> no, no. No one had to smack aside any any small children to go to rush somewhere. Me, you're being harsh. We all laugh together again. Okay, let's not hang around here. Let's get to the festival. Not much time left until Rika-chan's big debut. You're right. Great. Let's go, everyone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yo, if it isn't the daughter of Sonazaki, eat up. The yakisoba is packed full of pork. This year, we filled it up as much as we could. We even put in fried calamari. Gotcha, old timer. The yakisoba this year looks like quite an achievement. You have squid, too. You put a ton of, of time into this, didn't you? Wow, it's tasty, it's tasty. Yeah, the squid is delicious, but the aroma is just fantastic. It wonderfully compensates for how soft it tends to be. There's a delightful amount of squid and pork in it, too. Yep, not up bad at all, I say. Haha. <laughs> Kei-chan, sound like you could walk into a cooking program and become the host. Yeah, I see kei kun acting like it's so good, it somehow tastes even better. I don't discriminate among delicious food. So anything that I say is tasty has got to be worth trying out, right? Then Keiichi, please give us your opinion of this yakisoba again. I'll do it in two words. Absolutely scrumptious. If I had a second stomach, I'd buy another one right now. Having heard my three star rating, a whole line of people suddenly formed in front of the yakisoba. Wow, that's amazing. Heichan said it was so good that a little crowd started to form. Not bad. It was nothing to brag about, but I still decide to stick out my chest and put on airs. Hmm. Is that so? Then perhaps I shall try it out. Mister, mister, could I perchance bother you for one takayogi? Takoyaki. The Toko bought a stick of takoyaki ball. Takoyaki balls of fried octopus from the adjacent stand, and after blowing on it, put one of them into her mouth. She's gonna burn her mouth, I think. How is it, Satoko chan? If you give it a good rating, then Raina will buy it too. Chomp, chomp, chew, chew, go. Now it's time for the Misha. For the Hinimizawa Michelin, Judge Satoko Hojo to give her impressions. Uh, um. Mm. Though she was all for it a moment ago, Satoko hesitated to give her thoughts. Hey now, what's the matter? Brunel's take takes one of their own and puts it into their mouths. Huh? When it got gipped. Giped. Gipped. Gypped. No, wait. Gypped. Mine's bad, too. There's no octopus in it. This takoyaki vendor. Could this be some sort of of summer festival-only octopus-free takoyaki stand? So it's just balls of dough, a fried dough, then. An evil takoyaki stand that skimped on the octopus because they figured it would make them good money today. Ah, mine has some. Yeah, pretty good. Considering there's octopus in it. How am I supposed to explain that this octopus free takoyaki is any good? Everyone wondered about that. Our quizzical looks seemed to be drawing equally dubious stare from the people in the line. Uh, how, how about this? Takoyaki without any octopus is really healthy. But it's still fried dough. And even who don't like octopus can eat this delicious takoyaki. After hearing that, several surprise guests left the line. It had the exact opposite effect. Alright, I'll give it a try next. 
a self-inspired take on takoyaki in which you can clearly taste the simple flavors of the flour, green onions, and pickled ginger. The unaffected taste is bolstered by the absence of octopus. And half bad, but after hearing there's no octopus in it clause, even more people left the line. Rika-chan, any good comments? To be honest, 400 yen is too much for this. Oh, that might be the biggest burn on that one yet. <laughs> that was too honest. Even more customers leave the line dealing a lethal blow. There are other takoyaki stands around after all. Well, I mean, um, we might not want to be doing this. Hey, Satoko, you started all this, so give us a great big turnaround. I cannot do that. Why do you expect me to lavish praise upon Takoyagi without any octopus in it? You idiot. Taco's angry outburst was the finishing blow. There's only one... Th there is only one... Only one thing in this in this moment. That was for the stand. <laughs> for whoever was running the stand. Uh, the customers are all gone, huh? The guy is staring at us. Why is that? Why is that? Oh. Uh, there's no saving this crowd. Perhaps I, Keiichi Maibara, will lend a generous hand. Keiichi-kun, you could do it. I want you to save the takoyaki vendor who didn't put any octopus in. <laughs> Don't smile, say, smile as you say something so bitter. All right, fine. This may be the only chance you'll get to see a pro at work, so watch carefully. I shoved the stick into an octopusless takoyaki and crammed it into my mouth. As before. As before, there was no octopus in it. But Mion's had some in it. That was the important point. The man who runs this takoyaki stand. He truly loves takoyaki in every meaning of the word. No, it could be even said that he adores it. Huh? Everyone gasped in surprise, including the takoyaki vendor glaring at us. This man truly does love takoyaki. And because he loves it, he doesn't want to create half-hearted random ones. Isn't that right? Takoyaki looked down unsure. Those watching were listening intently Wanting to know why Octopus Les Takiyai deserves such a high rating. Peiji san, if he truly and really and truly loved Takoyaki that much, why did he make Takoyaki without Octopus at all? Is he not betraying that very Takoyaki? You may be right. In one sense, it is a betrayal. However, it's the best possible compromise this man could find. This man is making real Takoyaki today. As he always does. However, only one or two of them on each stick are the real ones. Well, you're right. The one I ate had octopus in it. Considering it did actually have it. Didn't taste bad at all, you know. Right. That was a bona fide takoyaki. And as for the other ones? It was the biggest compromise he could make against the biases of the general populace. And while think there need to be eight pieces on the stick or else... It's not real, Takoyaki. Hey, kun I don't understand what you mean. Why is one of them the real thing and all the other ones are fakes? Why? The secret lies in the octopus. Mister, this octopus, it's true Akashi octopus, isn't it? Recent years, the number of octopuses caught in Akashi has decreased, and their prices have risen drastically. The prices are now so high that you wouldn't think of using them in Takoyaki. 
Then the man who had been looking down this whole time mumbled, Yeah, that's right. Hashi Octopus. It's very expensive. But this man absolutely had to have the Akashi Octopus. He could have bought much worse quality octopus, but cheaper, as much as he wanted, and we have still been able to fool everyone. There are plenty of other scamming takoyaki vendors who claim theirs are from Akashi, even though they're not. But this man wouldn't accept it. He wouldn't tell lies. Akashi octopus are supreme. This is so sad. Despacito, play country roads. He would never relinquish this one stubborn conviction. This man loved takoyaki. That's why he never lied. Yet, there was one point that he absolutely had to compromise on. Oh, thank you for the fluid check, Avian. What might that be? The number. The popular opinion is that a stick of takoyaki should have eight pieces on it. Even if it's real Akaki Akbis, couldn't charge 400 yen for just one piece, could he? If he didn't have eight pieces, nobody would buy them. This man wept over it. In order to make just one true piece of takoyaki, he wouldn't ever let himself lie through the other seven. The octopus-free takoyaki vendor burst into tears. I gently clap one of his shoulders. No matter what anyone else says, I will never forget how genuine you are. You, sir, are a true vendor of takoyaki. You are the only one in the world with the right to call himself that. Clap, 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 clap. As I embrace the shoulder of this man, shedding his manly tears, those watching delivered a round of applause moved by my speech. Everyone, I beg of you, please, eat some of this true takoyaki vendor's takoyaki. If we don't treasure genuine men like this, then how can we protect the true path of the takoyaki? If nobody else will eat them, then I will eat them all. Everyone watching is lining up. Keiji-kun, you did it, you did it. I think it's more they thought Keichan's propaganda speech was interesting rather than that the takoyaki actually look good. Hey, Chan, you could probably sell plain old rocks if you tried. You would go over well at the entrance of Akihabara Station. Pika, I have never heard of this Akihabara. Where is it? Absolutely stunned at my successful pitch, the guy manning the stall next to this one called out to me. Hey, 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 you guys do that for my sweets, too. Great, you all get the gist of it, right? It's your turn, this time, Reyna. Okay, I'll do my best. Oh, when apricot sweets are cold, they're very, very good. Apricot is sitting so quietly, unnicely on top of the syrup. Oh, it's so cute. I want to take it home. Oh. Looks like she lost herself in this mid, this midway through. But a girl giving it such natural praise was itself bringing in some customers. A line was quickly forming behind Reina. Next up is the Okonomiki, Okonomiyaki stand. Satoko, you're up. Uh, rather well, um, a crunch of the fried tempura batter mixed with yakisoba is simply to die for. With a huge piece of bacon laid on top, when you bite in it, it all comes flooding out. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Yeah, that's freaking great. Now I want to try some too. Then a huge line met my words. What on earth is this? Basically all these onlookers are just, follow just following us all around to the, all the stands. People hear about the food from others and then try it for themselves. It tastes a lot better than it normally would. So that's it. Venerica Chan was gorging herself on the food, getting sauce on the bib she put on to prevent her shrine maiden outfit from getting dirty. Yes, the older guys are getting into it too. Okay, Kei Chan, which one should I do? 
Right. Mion, go to the stand next to that. Show them the depths of your power. But k -chan, the stall next to that is... Whoops. A goldfish scooping stand. Bit out of our element. No, as club president, I won't flee no matter who or what my opponent. Let's get started. I look forward to a splendid performance, Mion-san. The onlookers were also watching Mion with hopeful eyes. Welcome, welcome. Here's your net and bowl. Okay, here we go. Hmm. The goldfish are energetic today. They really look delicious. Small things like these, you could crunch them <laughs> down a hole. No, 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 eat the fishies. No, eat the goldfishies. Mielsen, what in the world are you saying? Do you eat them? Did you, did you eat the one Raina cut last year too? Oh my god! No, no I, I didn't say anything like that. His face went red. She shook it vehemently in denial. No, no, no. no. Well, I mean, you just you said yourself delicious. Yet yeah, you did indeed say so. My sister is omnivorous. She eats anything that can go in her mouth. They taste good, and maybe I'll try one next time. No, no. Oh my God. Yeah. Goldfish are not for eating. Fish are friends, not food. Oh, that counts says seven. No, 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 no. Rika-chan, don't. You'll get sick. Wait a second. Hey, what the hell? John, how long have you been there? Hey, you K-chan, Mion, everyone. Good evening. Uh, ah, yeah. Where did you come from, Sion? I've been here since the bit with the yakisoba. But that was for start. Okay, Shion is getting progressively more scary. Chick has ninja powers. You are all so loud that I found you right away. Jeez. Got nothing to do with this, do you? Go somewhere else already. Jeez, Mion, don't treat me so cruelly. Right, Kei chan You're okay with me being here, right? She asked, grabbing my arm and pushing her chest into it. I reiterate my point. The lion, the witch, and the audacity of this bitch. I don't. Kei chan you're a pervert. Your nose is bleeding. And you, when you squish a jelly donut, the jelly comes out, right? It's the same. This isn't something I have any control. The heck does that? I, I. The hell does? <laughs> My brain. My brain. I'll never have to worry after playing this game. After getting through this series, I will never have to worry about in case of a, a zombie apocalypse. Because I will have no brains for them to nam on. They will all be broken and just like... have melted out to my ears. Hey, is that right? Then will more come out if I squeeze harder? Squeeze! I want to get a crucifix. Be gone! 
Become demon. She hunts her. <laughs> it's right up against my chest. Drip. Yeah. Oh. Jim, what the heck are you trying to do? H How vulgar. I seem to have misjudged you. What about my flat chest? I'm face palming right now. That is what this is. I am face palming. Completely. Oh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm scared to click on what the deck response will be. I'm 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 truly terrified. And and thank you for for treating. Thank you very much for treating Darcy Lee. Poor poor Darcy Lee. Avert your eyes, Darcy. Lee. Greek child class to buy other tarp to rub. A plentiful plump feeling on my left shoulder and the sour sensation of a young, unripe fruit on my right. Ha ha. <laughs> boom boom bang. Xion, Rika-chan and I, our faces now bruised, fell to the ground, limbs sprawled. <laughs> nice job, Raina. Wait, does that mean she hit Rika? She hit Rika too. Based Sigma Sigma female Reina. Everyone's so dirty. Oh. Yes. Hit them again. Reina punched me. It really hurts. Rika, you get what you deserve. Also, I believe that was nine. No wait. No wait, because that was basically two that happened after and the other. So we're up to ten. Sheesh. Now that Xion was here, the injury around us had increased by 120%. I'm pretty sure it's over 9,000, actually. <laughs> Her friends are so much fun, Mion. I'll never get bored of them. All right. You weren't here. It would be way more fun, you know. <laughs> I want to stay with you all, but if I continue seducing Kei-chan, my sister looks like she's literally going to bite my head off. I'll retreat for now. I'll be back. See you, Mion. Don't be back. Get the salt. Someone get the salt! Goodbye. Yes. Holy salt, the crucifix, get holy water, repel, be gone, you suck up succubus, be gone, she devil. After chasing her older sister so much, Cheon ran away into the crowd of people and disappeared. I feel that I have borne witness to a rare side of Mion san. When Michan is with Shichan, she looks kind of cute. Raina smiled happily, earning her a whack on the head from Mion. D don't say dumb stuff. Let's get to the next stand already. We went about just like that, really noisy and lively to the other stands. We were paying money towards the beginning, 
but midway through, the guys running the shops thought we were just too funny. We ended up being able to fool around without paying much more. Thump. Vigorous sound of a big taiko drum echoed through the air. Oh. Do I have the ceremony? And actually, that makes... Seems like an okay point, and we're actually because I want actually to end at 11 since tomorrow. It's somewhat under a three hours the stream, but since next I'll be since tomorrow I'll be doing um basically I'll be reading intensively. I want to make sure I'm I'm prepped for that. Okay, where do I... There we go. Save. And I'll do a... Well. Because, yes, on thank you for the head pat, Foxglove. Um, because, yes, because tomorrow, 8 p.m. Central Time, is, um, is when I will start reading Lord of the Rings. We'll be starting with Fellowship of the Ring. Um, so that, or I even made my own little advert, which you may have seen either on my Discord or, um, on my Twitter. Um, 